Moving on to uh, Group B, uh, our friends El Tree leading up that group. Keep in mind, Mexico at uh, ranked, and these are FIFA rankings. I know, take them for what they are, grain of salt and all that, but Mexico at 14. Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, Vinotito, and uh, Jamaica. All right, uh, Stu, any first thoughts on uh, Group B? Yeah, uh, look, Ecuador, I had a lot higher hopes for them at the last World Cup than I think they ended up achieving not getting out of the group, which was very disappointing because I think, you know, this is a team with tons of young talent. I mean, Incapié right now doing excellent at Bayer Leverkusen. Estupiñan, I think, is one of the best left backs in the world. You know, you're losing and moving on now in terms of Ener Valencia being gone, their all-time leading goal scorer. But <laughs> weirdly, the team they beat in the first game of the World Cup now is their coach in Felix Sanchez from Qatar. And, you know, he's actually had a pretty good start to life. So I think that's a strong team, going to be a difficult one for Mexico. They'll see them in the last match, Mexico and Jamaica. I mean, that's, you know, a game we see consistently in Gold Cups and in CONCACAF. Jamaica, and man, they, the they can, cause Mexico. They can be- cause Mexico problems. This is a Mexican team. And I, I think it's something we should talk about is in terms of their confidence. Where are they at? Jaime Lozano, you know, Jimmy Lozano, Lamborghini, like they – they win the Gold Cup. They had the strongest team than anybody in that Gold Cup. Everybody else, essentially, the United States had a B team. So, you know, I'm not convinced that Mexico, this is them back and they've got their mojo back. I, I think they waited too long to move on from that generation of Guardado and Hector Herrera and, you know, Chicharito, those players. And we've yet to kind of see what we've seen from the U.S., which is that next generation emerge. Come up against Jamaica, who keep finding these dual nationals and bringing over Michaela Antonio and Premier League players that have good quality. I think Jamaica could cause an upset in that first game. Remember on Mexico, if not for an Edson Alvarez goal in the 11th minute of yeah. stoppage time, <laughs> they would be in Group D in this draw as CONCACAF Playoff B having a crazy play, yeah. uh, Costa Rica in the playoff just to get in the Copa America. But yeah, you rattled off some of the Ecuador players. One guy you left out is this 16-year-old Kendry Paez, who has already scored in World Cup qualifying. I think he's a potential story in this tournament. Oh, uh, and Moises Caicedo. Moises Caicedo. And Kendry Paez has already signed with Chelsea. He'll go there when he turns 18, where he'll be a teammate of Moises Caicedo. So yeah, Ecuador, this is a really interesting group, very balanced. You know, Venezuela, they're the only Comunidad Ball nation not to qualify for a World Cup. They're one of only two Comunidad Ball nations not to win a Copa America, Ecuador being the other. But Venezuela has made a strong start to qualifying. Um, So yeah, they're an interesting team as well. So uh, yeah, this group is fascinating to me. This pendulum that we always talk about when it comes to Mexico and the U.S. and the compare and contrast going on, it has swung well towards the U.S. and it is stuck there now for a while. And to your point, Stu, they all kind of be they all are kind of looking around, kind of like Germany right now. It's all just looking around and saying, yeah, but we're in Germany's case, we're Germany or Mexico. Yeah, but we're Mexico and just hoping for everything to come good from the soccer gods, but not a whole lot in the pipe in the pipeline there. And I think for if, you know, for you know, for the mental health, if you will, of the fans, the Mexican El Tree fans, uh, for the press, and I think even more internally for this team, they need to have a good summer. And this is a theme that we're going to talk a lot about relative to 2026, is what 2024 and the Copa America presents for these teams and how they can use it to drive forward into 2026. And I think if anybody out there needs a good 26 or a good 24 Copa America, uh, it's Mexico, but they're going to have their, uh, their hands full, but right off the bat, they get to play against Jamaica. They know Jamaica. I think they would feel confident playing again in the U S and this is the other thing with a lot of yeah, these they're, teams. They're America's, but number but one, just Mexico, team, by fact, the way, yeah. it's, there's a lot of these teams that have huge, huge fan bases over here. And so the home team, if you will, when we start watching these games next summer, it's going to be really, really interesting to see what the makeup is of this of the uh, of the crowd. How much is for one side? How much is for the other side going forward? And how much an advantage that is? Yeah. All right. Uh, just just quickly on that though, because I, I think Mossy brought up a point about the coaches at the beginning, and you know, you've got coaches in South America, Justin coaches being fired in qualifying. Jimmy Lozano was hired as an interim head coach to lead the team through the Gold Cup. He gets the job permanently. First Mexican head coach uh, now since uh, Herrera, the last one. But if he doesn't do well in the Copa America, fuera, fuera, fuera. out. I mean, it's, it's the same way when you think this is going to be his first big tournament as a head coach. He did well with Mexico in the Olympics, but that's under 23. Now this is, this is the big stage. 
they have to perform. Much like Greg Berhalter, we're going to talk about pressure on coaches throughout these experiences. But if he doesn't get it right, Mexico, they're not afraid to cut that coach, and he's going to be out, and they'll be looking for somebody else to 26. And the way this tournament is set up in terms of the groups, your first games are against the, well, the lower-ranked team. Whether they're inferior, it remains to be seen. But a lot of these teams, at least on paper, have the opportunity to build up to that third game when... Again, on paper, it is the most competitive going forward. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.